If you recently broke up with an avoidant partner and you just can't understand how they function, you feel confused, you feel lost, you can't make sense of what happened, this video is made for you. I'm a therapist and I'm an avoidant, so I'll explain everything that you need to know, all the questions that you have. And if you have any questions actually that I haven't answered, use the comment section. I will answer all those questions for you to, you know, finally make sense of this situation, make sense of that person. So if you want to get back together, you know how to adapt your communication and change a few things on your end. Also ensure that in the future, you don't fall into this avoidant anxious trap. Check it. I get my ex back.com. Everyone deserves a second chance. So first of all, the three core traits of avoidance, they value independence and self-reliance. I can do it on my own. I don't need anyone. That's why I thought for a very long time, I don't need anyone. And actually sometimes when I have a problem, my default will be like, I will try to deal with it on my own. Whereas like, for instance, my wife who's more secure, but she's like, I have a problem. I will ask how to do it. I will ask Google <laughs> and she will ask a friend. Um, th second one is di discomfort uh, with closeness and intimacy. So again, this is coming from childhood where we, we felt, well, pff, being close to someone, I feel a bit weird hugging people, for example, not only physic um, physical display of affection or physical intimacy, but it's just like, if we are too close to each other, I'm, I feel a bit weird. I feel a bit vulnerable. We hate to be vulnerable. Vulnerability is a sign of weakness for avoidant. The problem is that vulnerability is how you build intimacy. So that's kind of uh, the problem when you start to develop a relationship with an avoidant, because that's how you build intimacy. And also that's what you expect. And you are opening up, you are being intimate emotionally with them, but they just don't understand because they don't know how to express those things. Um, and the third one is uh, emotionally distance. So usually they are referred as dismissive avoidance because they dismiss emotions. It's bad to be emotional. It's bad to cry, right? Boys don't, it's not only for, for boys, but like, you know, this idea of boys don't cry, man up type of thing. Why right? like, you know, and, and in some families, you know, um, there's a you know equal distribution of, of of men and women being an avoidant, but it's just like when you grow up with family where well, you know you'll fine, don't you know don't complain, you'll be fine, you know, and you don't have anyone welcoming those emotions and just like listening actively listening to what you have to say at a young age, you feel like well that must mean there's no point being sad, angry, upset, etc. So I won't allow myself, and so. Very early, you, you learn a language or you learn a way not to allow yourself to feel those emotions. The thing is, we all feel, by the way, we all feel emotions. Avoidant, they decide to suppress those emotions. If you have an anxious attachment style, you have emotions, you know about them. But the problem is that you have a harder time um, doing emotional regulation, which is something that you, you can learn with a therapy. And so the confusing part with avoidance is that the initial relationship dynamic, they come across as super charming, independent, um, they would be caring. Sometimes people would say like they will uh, love bombing me because they are very into the, into invested in the relationship. For example, I'm kind of a romantic person. And so when I started my relationship, I would be sort of all in because I was attracted by the idea of the relationship, <laughs> but I didn't understand the constraints of the relationships. And so when, once you start developing the relationship, it becomes a little bit um, of a burden. So at the beginning, it's easy because you don't have to be necessarily emotionally open, right? At the beginning, it's at the surface level and they love it. Um, and so very early on at the beginning, obviously, they feel safe and sometimes they might open up. They might say things, and that's why it's confusing. I've never said this to anyone. Okay, but that doesn't mean that they're not avoidant. That means that they are forcing themselves to open up. And the breakup is unfortunately, and that's that's why it's so hard to deal with an avoidant, because they feel like they don't care. They feel that you had nothing. Uh, they could appear calm, unaffected, distant. They break up as if you had nothing. 
together as those X number of years meant nothing. That's not how it, it is because their reality is more different. And the problem as well is that when you break up with someone, you want to have answers. You want to know like, what have I done? Why now? You, it comes as a shock and you have so many questions and you have every right to have questions. But then, because they don't want to discuss about things, they hate conflict. They don't have the emotional maturity to understand and, and you know help you um, figure out and discuss those emotions that they will leave. They will actually feel even more pressured. And that's the problem is that when you start asking those questions, when you are emotional with them, that freaks them out. And that's why they will distract them. So like they will leave the room, they will leave the place, they will ignore your message. Sometimes they will block you because they have no, it's because the, the simple idea of confrontation makes them like, okay, no, no, this is not for me. I don't want to enter this type of dynamic. I can't do it. Right. And it's, it's always this, I can't, I can't, it's not working. I can't give you what you want. So in terms of the communication, what you'll see is they will minimize contact if you try to reach out. So you will say like, ding, 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 ding. They will just say, okay. Obviously non-emotional response. Again, they will try to keep like, okay, I broke up with you. You know, let's keep it distance because otherwise if we start discussing about emotion, if you start telling me that you love me, um, that you miss me, etc., I wouldn't feel comfortable. They will, as I said, dis avoid discussing feelings and they will withdraw as soon as you start conf uh, conversation becoming confrontational or about the breakup. Now, obviously you have to discuss about the breakup. If you want to get back together, you have to fix what was broken. You have to discuss on those things, but you shouldn't do it right away. You have to show them, okay, let's start respecting your distance. Let's start very friendly. What they like is surface level. Let's re-engage at a surface level. Of course, you need to go deep. As I said, it's how you build in intimacy, but don't do it right away. The painful element, the things you want to address are here. But if you go here, if you start from here, you will freak them out and it's going to be even worse. They're going to, you know, pull back even further. They're going to block you. So you want to go start surface level. That's not how you build intimacy. I do agree, but that's how you start engaging with someone who's avoidant. And what you have to remember, if you find it's hard, is that everything that goes inside, there's a lot of internal struggles. You don't see it, they are cold, they are distant, but there's internal struggle. They could be anxious, they could be sad. There's also, if they had, if this relationship was important to them, they would have this conflict about, I, I want a relationship, but I can't make it work. I want to be in love, but intimacy is scary. And you will always have this sort of conflict or I feel sad, but I can't process. I need to distract myself. Okay. So you always have this conflict that you can't see because they were obviously stone walling everything. So you don't have to, so you, you, they don't allow you to enter their world. But trust me, if that relationship was meaningful, that's how they feel. If you're secure or anxious, obviously you will speak with people, you will cry, you will vent and that's normal. That's okay. They will keep things to themselves. And the only thing that they will show to the world is like, I'm fine. It's fine. Are you okay? I'm okay. What about change? You can both grow with self awareness, with therapy. The point is not to be avoidant or anxious. The point is knowing about our limits, our triggers, our insecurities and work on them. And we all have an ability to work on those insecurities. Otherwise I wouldn't have a job, <laughs> you can do it. And the point, maybe he wouldn't or she wouldn't watch, th watch this video. Let's start it with you. Um, if you want to break this anxious avoid trap, let's try to be as secure as possible. The best way to deal with an avoidant is to respect their needs for space and, and, and also allow them to express their feelings. Very often we think like, oh yeah, I'm a good listener, etc. No, no, no. Usually in the context of a, of anxious avoidant relationship, the anxious will be the speaker, the avoidant, the listener. Reverse the roles. 
maybe it's hard for them to open up. It's like not maybe it's sure. <laughs> it's very hard for them to open up. And they will internally feel like oh, I want to say it, but I can't. I'm scared. And so anytime they will open up, you know, see this opportunity, in a way, congratulate them for that. Passion, patience, and um, and being open is super important. It will take time for them to feel ready. It will take time for them to realize what they've lost. Right now, you know what you want. You sometimes people they tell me like, I know exactly. I have the plan, etc. Yeah, but the thing is, you don't want to. You know, it takes them time to reflect. To reflect on uh, also the emotional processing. To reflect on what they really want. To reflect on the overall relationship. So it's important to have a phase of no contact where they can reflect as well on their end. And it's also important in that process, if you feel that you have an anxious attachment style, how can you nurture your independence? Because usually people have a hard time dealing with breakup because it's, they have a hard time being on their own. They have a hard time recalibrating their life away from someone. You know, we all have habits of, you know, we check in with our partner, or we send something or have daily rituals, and it's very hard to let go of those things. So it's the opportunity for you to see how you can nurture independence. A healthy relationship is not a codependent relationship. It's not a, a relationship where you're both independent because you never meet. It's a relationship where you are interdependent. So it's important to respect each other independence and learn how to be dependent from each other. And so for an avoidance, they have to learn how to depend and be uh, dependent on someone on, in an healthy way and for anxious to be more uh, independent. And yes, unfortunately, it's tricky, it's painful, and it takes a bit of time. You will get a lot of mixed messages. You will get a lot of hot and cold messages. You will be disappointed by the level of excitement or interest that you perceive in their text. The other day I had a, a call with a client and she was telling me, I finally broke the contact and I got triggered. And she told me what, you know, the conversation that he sent, that, the, that she sent to her ex. And he honestly and great well done because she was like um, she passed an exam nothing really bad in itself but she had high expectation she thought that he would start a conversation asking her about more things no 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 it starts really really neutral in a way if i look at that conversation that was like actually quite high intensity for an avoidant so you will feel you could feel overwhelmed you could feel triggered with this sort of reaction so be prepared because it might be a bit painful you have to go through that phase it's the only way for you to ensure that they feel safe and they will open up also the thing is when you are in this phase people will tell you like okay, you're wasting your time um, he's never gonna commit she will never settle all those things you know better than anyone whether this relationship has a potential I can't answer this question, you can. If this relationship has potential, the fact that he's avoidant or she's avoidant is not necessarily important. What's important is how you can reset the whole dynamic and see whether you can both create a new and improved relationship. And unfortunately, there's no, it's not a cookie cutting approach where you have to do a decision tree of, X, X number of days of no contact and you send this message and you send that message and if you are confused and want some, some help I will and I think I'm just going to do it on this video you can join me on WhatsApp I'll set a promo code on this video to have a chat with me and discuss this phase because I know it's confusing I know you're going to get those next few weeks of contact with your avoidant ex will be difficult because again you have a set of expectations and he or she won't meet those expectations at the beginning. It's all about the journey. And when we are in touch on WhatsApp, I will guide you and help you figure out whether you're making any progress, whether you're wasting time, whether there's anything else you could do and guide you. Because the, the problem with those situations is we feel like, okay, either we are too hopeful too optimistic and we don't see that we are wasting our time or we feel triggered anytime we receive a message or anytime we send something so it's a, having a sort of level of reassurance and also this idea of just have to follow what I tell you to do and that's 
relieving because you don't have to overthink 20 times about what you say. You have the confidence that if I do this, that will make me closer to my objective. Let me know in the comment section if you have any question on this and I'll see you on WhatsApp. Take care.